Hello there! Today I have the pleasure to do some positive videos. I have tested Zorin OS for the past maybe a month or two and I have had nothing but pure pleasure of using this operating system. Now don't get me wrong, I think that this operating system is not particularly po for all of you tinkerers who are in love with Arch Linux or maybe Slackware and similar uh, use cases. But however, for everyone else, I think this operating system is perfect. So let's start with some basics. This operating system promises to deliver a kind of a just works package. So it kind of uh, announces itself for uh, beginners uh, and for typical users who just want to get stuff done and for maybe users who want something a little bit more but they don't want to tinker with the operating system to actually make it function if you know what I mean. So if you want to compile everything and do something like that all the time, maybe just stick to your Slackware. I think that's kind of perfect for you. But now let's get back to these basics. Uh, I have installed Zorin really easy, like truly easy. It was like a next, next, next con continuous procedure. And I think everyone could do that with a little bit of will. So Zorin is based on Ubuntu. Uh, however, uh, in my previous couple of years, I have kind of dismissed Zorin as something that I should even have on my radar because I figured it's just another Ubuntu child. I mean, let's face it, Debian and Ubuntu have lots of kids. And I mean lots, lots of them. Uh, so what makes Zorin stand out? Well, ease of use, right? So what makes ease of use? In uh, the case of Zorin, uh, we have a lot of operating system teams, and by teams I mean the looks. So by default, Zorin looks really great. It, it looks really clean, and it, it you, you can see that developers have put some thought into making its uh, first appearance, you know, the, the first impression stand out. Like, this is neat. It, it's neat. It looks good. And now you have a lot of other themes. You can make it look like Windows 7. You can make it look like Windows XP. You can make it look like Windows 10, like Windows 11. You can make it look like, like GNOME 2. You can make it look like, um, like Ubuntu. You can make it look like Mac OS. There is a lot of these options and then you can fine tune all these options by uh, choosing your accent colors, whether you want it to be uh, a light theme or a dark theme. And there are some other options uh, which you can, of course, tune by your desires. This is like what's, what's the basics. Uh, and another thing that stands out is Zorin's Vine implementation. So every Linux distribution can do Vine, of course. You can install Vine and through Vine you can install Windows applications. Some operating system have this package a little bit better. Some have it uh, like just the basics of Vine. If you are into basics of Vine, you have to do all the configuration files uh, usually manually, depending on which application you are installing it. And if you're going into gaming, then you have to uh, worry some more, uh, etc. However, what Zorin did is basically, you can just go ahead uh, and go on the internet, download some random Windows application, uh, and you will get the executable. It will look like it looks in Windows. It will have its icon, uh, its executable file .exe. It will have a um, uh, icon that was prepared by developer, not uh, the random Linux or Wine icon. Uh, and you can just double click it. It will ask you, is this a game? Then you can go and tweak some other settings. If it's just an application, then you can just next, 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 like you are on Windows. And in most cases, this should just work. So I have tested this uh, on FUBAR. FUBAR is a really popular Windows music player application. And as you can see, my experience with installing FUBAR on Zorin OS was just flawless. It just worked. 
And this is how things are supposed to be uh, when you're trying to make an operating system that's aimed and targeted at people who don't want to tinker. So this operating system is more like for people who don't want to tinker and it does this job very well. However, there is one win Windows application that I need for my work and I have tried to install it through Zorin, uh, Zorin Swine implementation and basically didn't work. However, I did not really expect it to work. I was more like hoping it would work because I have never managed to force this application to work under Wine. It's a little bit specific in what it needs to function properly. So I guess no Wine implementation can do any miracles beyond what Wine is supposed to do anyway. So that's not what you what you should expect here. It's, it's just that what Zorin did here is that if the Windows application is able to function under Wine, it will do that and it will do that for you uh, in a manner of just a few clicks and that's what it does here. In this video I have shown you some win uh, Windows and Mac and GNOME teams uh, that Zorin provides and this is all a part of Zorin Pro. Zorin Pro is a paid version of Zorin OS which is uh, otherwise free and with the Pro version you get some extra support with it uh, which you can of course use if you uh, are pretty new into Linux and you don't want to surf the forums and help yourself. So that's like a neat option. Uh, if you don't pay for Pro, you will get some of these uh, visual skins, but not all of them. You can check out on their webpage which ones are free. Also with Zorin Pro, you get a whole plethora of pre-installed applications like DJ mixing applications, like uh, full office suite, like uh, Krita, uh, and Caden Live, uh, GIMP, and basically all of these applications, of course, you can install by your own, uh, on, on your own, and by yourself. Uh, but as I said, if you are a new user, maybe you would like to have this bundle of uh, all the applications that Linux provides in general so you can test all of that and see what works for you and what does not. What I think they did good is that the default GNOME application manager, application installer, it has a built-in support for snaps and flatpak and of course the operating system apt package manager. What Zorin did here is they have uh, by default and out of the box enabled Flatpak and some of the main applications that come with Zorin OS like Firefox are Flatpak packaged. So if the next version of uh, uh, Firefox uh, comes out, Zorin OS will pull that from FlatHub. There is also Snap support as I said, but it's disabled by default. Uh, generally I think this is good for just one reason and that one reason being that the average community and the most of the Linux community simply prefers Flatpak to Snaps and why that is and what I think about that I'm going to cover in one of my next videos. But for all intents and purposes and from Zorin's perspective and from perspective of a potential Zorin's user, I think defaults are good. And if you want to add Snap, you can just click on any uh, Snap version of applications from the store and it will install Snap Daemon on your first run, so it's easy as pie cake. I have tested Zorin on my ThinkPad T480 uh, ThinkPad. It's one of those ThinkPads that uh, makes every Linux distribution simply just works. So I didn't really expect any problems with it per se. But uh, with some Linux distributions I have had some issues with this particular laptop uh, which was kind of odd, so I was hoping that uh, Zorin will not have any issues and it indeed it had not had uh, any issues. I have successfully uh, closed my laptop lid for like 30 times in between reboots and it would go to sleep, wake up, use it tomorrow, uh, go to sleep, wake up, use it tomorrow, go to sleep, wake up. You, ju you just don't really need to reboot it. It wakes up from sleep every time and it's really rock stable. Uh, one of the odd things I found about Zorin is that it's actually uh, based on Ubuntu 23.10, which is not a long term, term support Ubuntu. However, I have not managed to 
crash Zorin in any way. I have not managed to find any bugs in my one or two months of usage. Uh, so that's kind of great. That's kind of great. And this is something you want from your operating system, which you don't want to tinker with. Zorin, of course, comes with GNOME, uh, not KDE. And this skin that they uh, have prepared, like default, looks very good. I wouldn't even change it uh, from default if I were me. Uh, but as I said, there are others uh, that can suit uh, all your needs and expectations. So fr from the looks of it, uh, it's, uh, it just gives you a good uh, amount of choice. And now let's wrap up this video. So uh, in my opinion, this Linux distribution is perfect for, as I said, for beginners, for typical users, and maybe slightly above that. So this is going to be my next go-to distribution that uh, from now on I'm going to recommend for new users instead of Ubuntu, which I have used to recommend until now. And that's pretty much going to cover it for today. If you are a new Linux user, I am truly recommend it uh, that you should give it a try. It's free. Uh, you will get every feature that you need. And let me know in the comments how your installation went, what, you, what do you think, and if you found this video helpful in any way. Thank you for watching and you are going to see me in the next video.